Hi folks, this is Glenn Guy. Mark Seymour was the lead singer, guitarist and songwriter with the iconic 80s and 90s Aussie rock band Hunters and Collectors. My favourite Hunters and Collectors songs include When the River Runs Dry, Do You See What I See, Talking to a Stranger and Blind Eye. I was fortunate indeed to see Mark and his current band, The Undertow, play at a resort in Moama by the banks of the mighty Murray River in New South Wales last weekend. It was a great show and a fantastic opportunity to hear some of my favourite hunters and collectors songs. I also had the opportunity to photograph the live show, which was great fun. The first photos in this series illustrate Seymour's zest for the live gig. He's a great singer and a consummate performer who revels in the engagement he so easily establishes with his audience. The musicianship underpinning Seymour's performance was well and truly showcased on the night. As a hobbyist guitarist, I was particularly impressed by the work of lead guitarist Cameron McKenzie. Drummer Peter Maslin and bass man John Favaro provided solid and often skillfully understated rhythm. As storyteller, it's important that you tell a story or express a view through your photography. Alternatively, as an artist, you might be more concerned with exploring the various nuances of colour, light, mood and composition. I'd like to think that my own work explores the space between these two paths. My own impression of the show, as it unfolded, was very positive, and I was drawn to the different levels of interaction that occurred during the performance. There was the interaction between Seymour as frontman with his audience, as well as the interaction between him and the other members of The Undertow. It became important to me that, to document the experience of the gig, I needed to concentrate on the interactions that were unfolding in front of me. Here's a great candid moment where Seymour tells the story about buying his old beat up Fender Telecaster back in 1971. As I witnessed this connection between Seymour and lead guitarist Cameron McKenzie, I had to time the release of my camera shutter so as to reveal both their faces. Here's an intimate moment with Seymour on acoustic guitar. I've only photographed live performances such as concerts on a handful of occasions. However, as a teacher of photography, I'm aware of the problems most folks have photographing under such conditions. Let's examine them now. Access. Fortunately, my entrance ticket said that 35mm cameras were allowed at the event. Obviously, that includes DSLR cameras. This was an outdoor event with a relatively small crowd at Moama on Murray, a resort owned by friends of mine, John and Carolyn Noonan. While security was present, I had no trouble moving up to the very front of the stage where I worked at a range of focal lengths, including 24mm, on my full frame Nikon D800E camera. I wasn't challenged or harassed by security or overly zealous fans in any way. That made the process very straightforward, easy and fun. I neither asked for nor was granted any special favours. I just went about my business as discreetly and professionally as possible. I was given the eye of Sauron by the artist when he noticed my camera, but I understood that to mean something akin to, now listen here son, don't you go spoiling everything for me and the audience by firing off that flash right into my face while I'm working. As that was not my intention, I simply got on with it, photographing entirely with existing light. Mark saw what was happening almost immediately, and being the consummate professional, even glanced over my way once or twice during the performance to check that I had been able to record a particular moment. I very much appreciated the gesture. The notion of potentially spoiling the night for performer and or audience is one reason why I would never use flash, except when granted permission and if there was no other option. Having played in bands myself might go some way to explaining my attitude, but really, while photography is incredibly important to me, I'm not the kind of person who goes about making photos at the expense of others. I make photographs, I do not take photographs. I think it's important to stress here that people photography is a collaborative process in which photographer and subject are partners in the creative process. Freezing action. 
A common problem folks have when photographing live events is a lack of illumination resulting in unwanted blur through camera shake or subject movement. The best ways to cope with this include one or more of the following. Open up your lens's aperture to allow more light in and, as a consequence, achieve a higher or faster shutter speed. Increase your camera's ISO. On an exposure mode other than manual, every time you double your camera's ISO, you will, as a result, automatically double the shutter speed. On manual mode, things change. An increase in ISO without adjustments being made to shutter speed or aperture will result in an increase in brightness. And of course, we're referring to manual exposure mode, which has nothing to do with manual focus. Hold your camera really still and employ, when available, image stabilization or vibration reduction technology. That will make a substantial difference when trying to obtain sharp images under low light conditions. This was an outdoor gig, though the lighting on stage was quite bright. Nevertheless, I chose ISO 3200 to provide me with a very workable shutter speed of around 1 200th of a second, which I've used in all but the very first image in this series. I deemed the 200th of a second would enable me to freeze most of the action that occurred during the performance. I just had to make sure I was getting the focus right as the performers rocked backwards and forwards from frame to frame. And F4, of course, doesn't give a particularly large depth of field. White balance. I was careful to get a good feeling for the lighting before I started photographing. Fortunately, the artist's faces were lit in addition to the background. The fact that the color of light varied from moment to moment and from foreground to background was not a problem. The warm, cool colour contrast between subject and background made for more visually dynamic images. However, the variation in intensity of the light caused other problems. To maximise sharpness, I was working at my lens's maximum aperture of f4. That required an ISO of 3200 to achieve a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second which I deemed sufficient to freeze modest amounts of subject movement. On my previous camera, a Canon 5D Mark II, it was a compromise moving up from ISO 1000. It wasn't so much the noise that was generated, but the loss of supple highlight and shadow texture that occurred once the ISO was raised above 1000. My current camera, a Nikon D800E, performs better at higher ISOs as it should, it's a more modern camera. When photographing rock bands live on stage, a slightly grungy look is often acceptable, perhaps even desirable. With that in mind, there would be times when I might further increase my ISO in line with the job and situation at hand. It's horses for courses, and a sharp image with noise is almost always going to be more acceptable than a blurred image. Photographing live performances can be fun, but it's also challenging. If you get the opportunity, I think you should take it. But get used to your camera and how to find the various buttons, dials and controls in the dark. And make sure you work in as safe and responsible a manner as possible. If you want special access, you only have to ask. Every now and again, you'll get it. It's your choice whether you work JPEG or RAW. Likewise, it's your choice whether you work on manual exposure or, for instance, aperture priority. You also have the opportunity to work with automatic white balance or to manually select an appropriate white balance, which you would then play with as needed on the desktop. I'm not sure really that it's my role to tell you how to go about doing this, particularly if I'm going to suggest a method that's totally different to what you're used to. If you're not used to manual exposure, my recommendation would be to go for aperture priority and then as a general recommendation to open your aperture up as wide as possible for instance f4 as the light changes the camera will then automatically choose what it thinks is the right shutter speed to produce an image with acceptable brightness 
It doesn't mean it'll be the correct result. However, it's a good starting point, and if you're making a series of pictures under the same intensity of light, then you'll be able to work out quite quickly whether you need to increase exposure via your exposure compensation button, the plus minus feature on your camera, to achieve a more acceptable result. White balance is tricky. Because I shoot in raw mode, I have a lot of latitude to fix white balance issues on the desktop. If, however, you shoot in JPEG mode, it's certainly desirable that you get as close to correct white balance as you can when you're making the photographs. Of course, what does white balance mean? Theoretically, we're talking about neutralizing the color of light so that it's effectively white or neutral. As a result, subject color will record accurately. However, that's not the case with live performances where artificial light is employed. The colour of the lighting is crucial to the mood being expressed in the song. In that circumstance, you would want to embrace the colour of the light, in which case the daylight or sunny white balance setting might be a good option. Because what that does effectively is switch off the camera's ability to alter white balance. In other words, you're accurately recording the colours that are really there. So a key takeaway point there is that the daylight, also called direct daylight, also called sunny, depending on the camera in question, that particular white balance is actually not about photographing outdoors uh, on a sunny day. What it really means is that no white balance is being applied by the camera. So you're recording the colors that are actually there. Okay, so there's some uh, basic tips on how to photograph live performances, which I hope will be helpful to you guys. And if you get a chance, check out the wonderful music of Aussie 80s and 90s band, The Hunters and Collectors. And in addition to that, you might want to check out Mark Seymour and his current band, The Undertow, via social media. Thanks so much, and I look forward to sharing lots of new tips with you folks soon. This is Glenn Guy. Bye for now.